Hello everyone, Manuela Marcajani from Isomer Skin Care. Welcome to our channel. I asked ChatGBT to create an anti-aging skincare routine for me. And so this is what they came up with. Okay, let's go through it. I think this is gonna be fun, right? So they replied. I said, can you make me an anti-aging skincare routine? So ChatGPT replied, certainly. Here's an anti-aging skincare routine that you can follow. Step one, cleanse. Start by cleansing your face with a gentle cleanser that is suitable for your skin type. Look for a product that's formulated to remove impurities and debris from your skin without stripping it of its natural oils. It's important to choose a product that does not contain harsh chemicals that can irritate your skin. Step two, I want to do these two steps together. Exfoliate once or twice a week. Use an exfoliating product to remove dead skin cells and promote cell turnover. That's true, that's why we want to exfoliate. Choose a product that is gentle and non-abrasive and be sure to follow the instructions carefully. Okay, so first of all, I think they're right. You're gonna to want to cleanse, but you don't want to exfoliate once or twice a week. I like to exfoliate almost every day, at least once, at, once a day, using our daily exfoliating cleanser. Now this contains alpha and beta hydroxy. This is gonna clean your skin. It's not going to strip your skin, which is very important. So it doesn't have those harsh chemicals. It will remove impurities. So it's doing, so that's exactly how I would be doing it as well. But the beauty of this, this actually has natural beads in here. And this is gonna help polish your skin and it does it gently and effectively. A lot of exfoliants can have sharp edges and they can actually create micro tears on the skin. So what you exfoliate or polish your skin with is super important. The other thing, it says look for a product that doesn't strip your natural oils. So you don't want something that's gonna dry your skin out. You want something to clean your skin. So that means right away, if you're using a cleanser or a soap and your skin feels squeaky clean, that's stripping your oil. So that's really good advice. But the other thing to be very aware of is you're going to cleanse your skin. You want to um, exfoliate. You want to use something that's gonna help clean your skin, balance the oils get rid of the dead dry cells and debris, yes, pollution, anything that's gunky stuck on your skin, that's a, the function of the cleanser, but leave your skin soft. And then of course exfoliating, because that's part of the polishing, it's a little bit deeper in the cleansing, right? But then it says, step three, it says tone. Use a toner to help balance your skin's pH level and prepare it for the rest of your skincare routines. You know why it says this? It says it because most cleansers are a different pH. They're not acidic. They don't have an acidic pH, so it strips your acid mantle. And this is something that has bugged me, has been one of my things for the last 25 years, 30 years here. At, uh, when we formulate, when we created our cleansers, we don't use a toner. And the reason why you don't need a toner is because you don't have to fix the pH of your skin. So when you're cleansing your skin and you're using something that is maybe more alkaline, then you want an acidic toner to bring the pH back in your skin to make your, to make your acid mantle um, balance properly again. That's the function of a toner. For me, I think of it as taking your skin through a pH roller coaster. And when you're changing the pH of your skin that much, they, like you have to think about pH as a zone of an environment that regulates bacteria, okay? And creates an environment for your skin. So when the pH is not acidic for your skin, it's not the right level, not the right um, your acid mantle is not intact, your skin becomes drier or weaker, and bad bacteria actually get, has the opportunity to become stronger. So we've always gone with cleansing and balancing that acid mantle right from the start. So we always skip, I always skip the toning, right? So, so ChatGPT isn't technically wrong because if you look at the industry, but for me, from a cosmetic uh, formulation perspective, 
the cleanser should not be stripping your acid mantle. You don't need a toner. Okay. Um, then it says step four, serum. Apply an anti-aging serum that contains ingredients like retinol, vitamin C, or hyaluronic acid. These ingredients can help to boost collagen production, reduce appearance of fine lines and wrinkles, and brighten your complexion. Yes, 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 that's not bad. I also, because the anti-aging element, in my serums, I actually look at a couple of things, okay? So what we're doing with the serums, of course you want the retinoids. Retinoids are proven, and that you use them at nighttime, but you want the retinoid because it helps stimulate that collagen production. I like utilizing a retinoid that also contains um, other antioxidants in here. That's really important. I also want, so they're saying, talking about using the retinoids to stimulate the collagen, the vitamin C, and the hyaluronate. I like to go with the collagen peptide as well, so I would add that, so like a Matrixyl 4 that has the full family of collagen peptides and the hyaluronate. That's going to be really good for anti-aging because what's, what's aging, you know, what are we fighting with anti-aging skincare routine is the lines and the wrinkles. It's your collagen quality. So everything that you're doing here is about balancing the microbiome and building your collagen quality. What builds your collagen quality? The retinols, the, the collagen peptides like Matrixyl, vitamin C is going to help with that. If you're over 40, here is my little bit of information. Glutathione, master antioxidant. This is going to, it's really important, especially 40 plus skin for anti-aging. This is gonna give you more of a boost. If you, ha if you can use both vitamin C and glutathione, great. Use one in the morning, one at night. If you could only use one after 40, I would go with the glutathione. That's my um, contribution to my serum phase here. And that's how I would do it. Then it says, Ah, I can't believe it says this. Eye cream. Use an eye cream to help reduce the appearance of crow's feet, dark circles, and puffiness around the eyes. Look for products that contain peptides, which can help to firm and tighten the skin. All right, here we go. I am not a fan of eye creams. So I would recommend an eye serum. Here's, here's what you can do. We've talked about three serums already or four serums. We have the retinoid, the collagen peptide, and the antioxidant serums, the glutathione or the vitamin C. Any one of those can be put all over your entire face and neck area, including around the eyes. Then if you want to, I like the Fast Lift Eye Serum to use around the eyes. I like using a serum around my eyes so because of the fact of this. When you start using even heavier creams, because after your serums you're going to put a cream on, you don't and when you put a cream on, that's gonna be enough moisturization for your face. It should be more than enough moisturization for your eyes. The skin around your eyes is thinner, and so it doesn't require two, three, four layers of cream. So if you've got a separate eye cream in that area, I'm not a big fan. Also, a lot of these eye creams contain silicones, or, um, and those tend to, okay, so this is what happens. You're gonna take an eye cream, you put it on, and you look at your eyes, and you go, oh, look. My skin looks so smooth, this eye cream's amazing. No, what the eye cream is doing, it has silicones or it has some kind of uh, film former on the top, and your skin is kind of sweating or evaporating or the moisture gets trapped underneath there, and it smooths out your skin around the eye, and you get this false sense that the wrinkles are gone, it looks better. But it's just basically the base of the cream for around the eye area. I would go with the serum, go with the nutrition, go with the building blocks of protein, and go with something that's lightweight so it's not actually going to promote puffiness or milia. All right? That's where I would go. Then, moisturize, okay. Now step six, moisturize. Apply a moisturizer that is formulated for your skin type to hydrate your skin, yes, and help prevent the formation of fine lines and wrinkles. So you want a product that contains ceramides, glycerin, and that will help lock in moisture. Here we have a ceramide barrier relief. 
I like something with the ceramides. I also like uh, something that has a probiotic in it, a tract of microbiome. Again, that's another product that's going to have the, micro, the, the nutrients for the microbiome because that's also going to help with your ceramides. Glycerin is also really important with hyaluronate it's, uh, and ceramides to help lock in moisture or bring more moisture to the skin. This is going to be good as a hydrator and moisturizer. So, so those things are two different ways of bringing moisture. So one is more of a water-based, one is more of a fat-based kind of hydration, which is water and moisture to the skin. Then finally, so everything, it's not bad, but ChatGBT is not as up-to-date as we want it to be. And then finally, step seven, sunscreen. Apply a broad spectrum sunscreen with an SPF of 30 or higher every day to protect your skin from the damaging effects of UV radiation. Absolutely. This is our uh, sunscreen. Um, sunscreens are important. Sunscreens, sunscreens should be your last step. Um, winter, summer, spring, fall, you want to use your sunscreen. You want to help interrupt the UV irradiation, the harmful rays from the sun and the environment, from that to your skin. You need something to stand in there and protect you. And sunscreen is it. So sunscreen is backed by science. A lot of people are saying, oh, these chemicals and whatnot, or I don't see sun damage, so you know I don't need to wear sunscreen. Don't wait till it's too late. There's so much happening underneath your skin that you haven't seen yet. In the laboratory, we do um, cyoscopy. We look underneath the skin, and even young children have damage that will then come up to the surface or grows underneath before it comes up to the surface. That's why you want the sunscreen to interrupt. So overall, I think it's pretty good. I think it's pretty fun. I, we're going to challenge ChatGPT and ask it more questions, I'm sure, in the future. But it is a good framework. And I hope I've been able to add a little more insight into each step and give it a try. I think you're going to love this anti-aging routine.